Back at it with another SAO Scene 3 cut content. This is episode 3, Kirito versus the Goblin for Mr. Fox and Anime. Let's get it. Kirito and Yujiro versus the Goblin Attack Force. So what's up guys, Fox me here. And Hello. good job right there, Kirito. What, it took you like 24 hours to screw everything up. Here's a good idea. How about tripping the blonde dude and going for the tied up girl? Of course, I'm only joking. Maybe. <laughs> what the fuck? Wait, what did she just say? He just casually said the sacrifice to Yu-Gi-Oh! Go save the girl. Might be a better idea to play Monster Reborn on that white dragon skeleton over there. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started. Was this Kirito's fault? Why was she tied up? Because the girl was asking, Selko was asking about Alice and what happened. And she got interested and she went in by herself. That's right. Then she got captured. It's showtime. At the start of this episode. Wait, what did you just say? Did he just say it's showtime? Hold up, he's memeing. To over there. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started. It's showtime. That's gotta be intentional. It's showtime has to be intentional, right? At the start of this episode, <laughs> I freaking called it. Lazy ass Kirito wouldn't ever get up on time. Although, can you blame him? 5.30 a.m. That's super early. Although that- Dude, 5.30 a.m. is like when I go to bed now. My sleep schedule is so fucked up with content creation schedule recently. I literally stream from like 4 p.m. to like midnight and then I'll stay up until 5 in the fucking morning and then I'll go to bed and I'll wake up at like 1 or 2 p.m. It's fucked. I don't know what happens. This is what happens when I become an unemployed need. All sense of structure and discipline in my life is gone. It's, every day is just bleeding into each other. I don't have a sense of time and space anymore. It's like summer where you don't even know which day it is. Holy fuck. And like, it's because it's summer right now, it's a little bit easy to tell when it's like light outside, when it's winter time, I'm going to wake up and I won't even realize if it's day or night. So that's only like my current schedule right now in Japan. <laughs> right here, I did appreciate the callback to Sugu from Kirito's point of view. Did Kirito see a parallel between Sugu and Selka? Yeah, I think I made the comparison that Selka was maybe a hybrid of Sugu and Asuna just because of Asuna's hair color and Sugu's just being a sister. Or is Kirito perhaps feeling a little homesick? Like I said, it's been only a day so far. Either way, next time I gotta- I have zero faith that Sugu will be showing up in SAO Arisization. It'd be cool if she did. I'm just still- Like, again, with those extra STL machines, like... I would like some cool characters to show up, but a part of me... Do I want the gang or do I want some evil motherfuckers? I- I- like, low-key, I, I want, like, the other fucking Zaza and, like, you know, the leader just sh to show up from the American military. I have a feeling that the Selka alarm won't be so nice to Kirito. Gotta learn some Sacred Arts alarm ritual. As for this whole day, you still got Kirito tagging along with best buddy Yujiro. Better get used to seeing this daily sweaty blonde dude chopping away with the axe for years. That Gigas tree isn't going anywhere. For this episode, I was enjoying- Why is the tree chopping sound so fucking loud, man? Every chop is like BONK! And I'm like, oh, it's a jump scare every time. And the little colorful animals you got to see throughout the episode. Pina. Pina. Silica? Pina? Not Pina. Soda. Especially that adorable rabbit. Or is it a rabbit? Just knowing Kirito, he could be thinking like it's one of those SAO rabbits. Especially after only having rock hard bread to munch on. Not only were those SAO rabbits super delicious, what? they gave you a ton of experience. <laughs> hey, come on. Too bad for Kirito that Chef Asuna isn't anywhere around. Oh, this is season one shit. Oh, this is fucked up. Yo, leave this rabbit alone. And then they made soup out of it. And then they had video game sex. Better start getting friendly with Selka. Anyway, as for Yuji's little chat about Alan. No, fuck Selka. The cooking was from the mom. Yo, Foxen, you told me last episode. Last, last episode. <laughs> Fucking Alice is a fraud. She ain't cooked shit. It's all mom. So Yuji was still nostalgic for Alice's delicious lunch. I'm really sorry, Yuji. You really did lose a potential good wife for these times. Although, let's think about it. It's not so bad. We met her in episode 11 or 10, and then she slapped the fuck out of you, Gio, though. You still might be able to get a taste of that lunch from Alice yes. or Selka. Yes. Ah, uh, yes. Let's talk about Selka. Surprise. Selka is Alice's younger sister. Hello. So just like Alice, Selka has taken a position at the church to learn the sacred arts, which is really following in her sister's footsteps. Let's just hope that Selka doesn't completely mimic Alice. Anyway, switching it up to you, Gio, talking about the sacred arts. So what's this? Magic. Unfortunately, you can't play Monster Reborn in this world. 
However, life extending arts do exist. Durability transfer. Be life pausing. I don't know if that's more surprising, or the fact that young Alice was easily able to find this in the church's ancient spellbook. Life pausing. I wonder if there was a way where, again, as you age, your durability decreases. I wonder if people have figured out a way to just like halt durability entirely. I still like the theory that like some people are just like <laughs> harvesting. You know, like, there's, like, conspiracies of, like, you know, politicians are so fucking old yet they're still going because they feast upon, like, the stem cells of fetuses and shit like that. And that's literally, like, durability. Like, I don't know, maybe the church, it, like, harvests on, like, the durability of other people and is able to continue living forever. Something that's not surprising is that the only ones able to use as high-level sacred arts are those that belong to the Axiom Church. So, Kirito, forget about trying to become a Shinigami. Try to become a wizard from this school. Anyway, as for Yuju's surprise treasure, Yuju of Sneaky blue Little Rose. had the blue rose sword all along. Yep, he had it since the fucking day that we lost Alice. And then, for about how many years after, from episode 1 to 2, he kept swinging the sword, even though the sword was there. He could, sorry, he kept swinging the fucking axe, even though the sword was in his fucking closet. And if Kirito was never here, he would have wasted his entire life chopping the fucking tree. He would have spent the entire time. Isn't it taboo to steal the sword? Who are we stealing it from? There's no one that has, has ownership of this sword. The sword simply existed upon the burial site of the, not the burial site, of this, the dragon corpse and shit. This was that sword from all those years back. With this, Yujo brought up that town's tale about the legendary hero yet again. Wonder what happened to that guy. What was the legendary hero's name? Do y'all remember? The episode 1 content was not interesting. Legendary hero. How, what was the lore of the legendary hero? Fuck. Berkeley? Okay. We'll remember that name. Ah. What was the story? He just slayed the fucking the dragon with the blue? I don't know. I'd have to go back to into the lore. I feel like that's going to be important for the future. Perhaps more interesting is Yuju's recollection about Alice in the Ice Cave. Still no mention about young Kirito being there. It's almost as if he got mind wiped. Is there yeah. a founding titan somewhere around here manipulating memories? a casual fucking spoiler <laughs> but anyways not related to sao although i should point out there's high level arts for more life i think that mind wiping someone should be around the same level for the sacred arts in other words could it be the church doing this mm -hmm. and about the blue and again the memory wiping or memory you know manipulation it, it, again that's probably the way that alice is right now since this is 30. blue rose sword itself i know some of you have brought up how it looks like kirito's dark repulsor you know kirito's busted sword from sao and I gotta be honest. Is it just a blue I skin of it? I some similarities to it, but it's really not a close match at all. By the way, did you notice the blue rose sword almost looking transparent in some shots too? Oh. This blue rose sword is, however, heavy, just like Kirito's swords in SAO. Perhaps too heavy though. <laughs> yeah. Or you Three months. What? Three months. <laughs> Yuji's entire childhood is just wasting time. Like, he's committed to just chopping this fucking tree down for the rest of his life. He also spent three months just hauling this sword back from the fucking cave. <laughs> I can't even imagine. He wants to carry this out. So, like, how did he do it? So, every day, he tried to drag the sword a little bit by little. But, obviously, at a certain point, it's too much and he gets tired. Does he go back home? Does he just walk back home and just leave the sword in the middle of the fucking road? He goes home and he sleeps and the next day he comes back and picks it up? Or has he just, like, for three months, he didn't, like, go home and was continuously just hauling this fucking sword? Like, I wonder how that works. I gotta admit, that is some extreme dedication. Either way, I think the most important part is that this blue rose sword seems to be classified as a divine object. Mm. At least according to yuji -Oh. Do we know any other divine objects in SAO right now? Divine object. I am not sure. So a divine sword, that's actually sounding more like Kirito's Excalibur from Alfin Online. At least... And I wonder if Alice's sword is an equivalent of Excalibur, because it's all golden shit. Kirito does have some experience wielding something like that. And yes, as for freaking Kirito trying to... Also, I think it's extremely obvious that in the future, like, Kirito... When is Kirito the most strongest? It's when he has dual wielding, also Golden Knight Kirito, right? Like, I think it's obvious, so painfully obvious that they're saving this one dual wielding moment for the future where Kirito will dual wield, obviously, the demon cedar tree that he has, right? The black sword that he has, plus the blue rose. That's gotta be the dual wield for the future. I wonder who he's gonna use it on. I don't know. I don't really know any of big antagonists right now. We're just getting introduced to some of the integrity knights. We'll be... 
I don't think we're going to be using dual wielding in episode. We don't even have the swords right now. Alice fucking took it. Here's his sword as an axe substitute. Complete failure right there. But did you notice? Yeah. There was a shining bright light from just swinging the blue rose sword. Yeah. Hey, Kitty, though, you should try doing a sword skill with it. Yes. Actually, now it has me thinking about how dragons are weak to ice. And there was a dead dragon in that cave. Coincidence? No, because Hero Berkeley used the ice sword, blue rose ice sword to slay the dragon. Was that not the lore? I think not. Next up, let's talk about Kirito checking out his own stats. So you know about the life or durability parameter. Yeah. This time you're hearing about this object control authority. Yeah, so there's like three important, you know, stats in this game, which is actually pretty concise. I'm not making it convoluted. It's just three separate things. Durability obviously is life. Then you have fucking, you know, object authority level, which is the... Uh, level at which you can start using certain objects. If Blue Rose is too high of object authority, you're, it's like four, it needs level 50, but you're only level 48. It's going to be heavier. You're going to be also have less efficiency. And the same thing with the system um, authority or system control, right? Where it's like you need to have this level or you can't use these like system calls. This is super important. Kirito's own authority is currently only 38. The Blue Rose Sword, this divine object has 45. So Kirito, time to go do some power leveling. Go ahead and chop down that tree and maybe you can use a sword. Next up, Selka and Kirito's little nighttime chat. Gotta find <laughs> out more about this mysterious Alice. Or Kirito, basically. <laughs> no, it's just Selka, she's too... Don't blame Kirito, no, I don't know. We gave her all the information. It was very obvious that she was gonna go to the fucking cave though. I did find it weird how Selka brought up the fact that Yujo didn't appear happy anymore. Although of course, you know, this isn't the case. Yujiro was smiling a ton with Kirito. Yeah. And why not to Selka? Because he's gay as fuck for Kirito now. Nah. Because he feels guilty about Alice. By the way, I just found it freaking adorable how Selka clearly has a crush on the older Yujiro. Unfortunately, the truth came out here. Poor Selka sees herself as this replacement for Alice. <laughs> so even without Alice, Selka is constantly Ouch. living in her shadow. Or at least putting herself in that mindset. Ouch. As for the runaway Selka, of course this little girl was going to turn into this little troublemaker. She was kind of sneaky about that too. Hey Kirito. Was it? I feel like this specific moment was so obvious when she was like, oh, okay. Well, you better get up by yourself tomorrow. Nope, I'm definitely not going to be your personal alarm. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Gotta get more time <laughs> Indeed. To get to that crystal cave. Although given that Selka has never been to that ice cave, it should have taken her a lot longer to get there, too. Thinking back to it, young Kirito and friends took four hours, and that was them knowing the way, more or less. But let me go ahead and be fair to Selka. Kirito's the one that totally screwed up here. The do Yeah, because he told her what happened there, I guess. It was very likely they didn't tell Selka the details, so she wouldn't follow in Alice's yeah. footsteps. And yes, that Nah, where's the accountability from the kid? Fuck this shit. Nah, 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 nah. It's not Kirito's fault. Nah. This, like, six-year-old toddler should have had the awareness and sense of uh, responsibility. Bro, it's her fault, not Kirito's fault. Nah, nah, I'm not gonna play Kirito for that. No, it's both their fault. Kirito told her the details. Obviously, you shouldn't tell a fucking kid that's so desperate to find a sister, but she moved, she made the action. She made the conscious decision to go do it. That kind of does sound counterproductive. In other words, don't tell Soka the exact details. Otherwise, Soka might step into the dark territory just like Alice. Except for Soka. Great, then the sisters would be reunited. It wouldn't be out of curiosity. It'd be potentially to visit her long-lost sister, Alice. Next up, Kirito and Yujiu at the Crystal Cave. Let's talk about Yujiu's DIY flashlight here. The so like Yujiu flower thing, dandelion. Alice used years back. Come on, Kirito, try to do system call log out. I wonder if system that would work. Call GM access. Or that fun one. System yeah, it's the fucking, remember SCGG, it's fucking the ALO at the end? You know, it's like, it's like authorization, like level like Heathcliff, summon Excalibur. That shit was so hype. Oh, summon Excalibur. System call summon Excalibur, bro, would be so fucking hype. Oh my god. It's just like, maybe there's like an object authority level or like a, sac like a system authority level. Like level Kaiba, you, you, it's not a number, it's not a numerical number, you need like a object control level Kaiba to be able to wield like Excalibur or something. He thought that Yujiro could only use a simple sacred arts. Anyway, about those goblins in the ice cave. Freaking dumbass Yujiro yelling out. Good <laughs> yeah. job right there. <laughs> that was very fucking stupid, he pulled aggro so fucking quick. Buddy, 
And I gotta say, those goblins sure look freaking horrifying. Pretty detailed. Yeah, the goblins were very menacing. They did. They were definitely not friendly goblins from like Tensura. Has there ever been friendly goblins in an isekai other than Tensura and to a lesser extent every monster? They're all just these creepy, disgusting menaces, man. Two. And I keep on hearing about some other Sorry. Orc or Technical difficulties. Three, two, one. Is it are we back? Or goblins. Ow, 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 ow. Jesus fucking Christ. This is shitty fucking AirPods compatibly with the PC, bro. And we're back. I think. Are we? Yeah, we are. He's airing right now. Goblin Slasher or something like that? Definitely haven't seen it, so tell me how these compare if you have. You mean Goblin Slayer? Is he memeing? Unfortunately for you, Gio, someone summoned the Goblin Attack Force. They even got the Papa Goblin. These dark monsters got claws, weapons, they look pretty buff. Yeah. They even have armor plating. Meanwhile, on the other side, Yuju and Kirito are just a couple of meatbags right now. Poor and they called us a specific derogatory term. I-U-M. It was not lum. It was like an I-U-M. I-U-M. That's what they call the humans. Poor Yuju is even crapping his pants. So Kirito, looks like you're screwed if you can't dual wield. Although, <laughs> what am I talking about? You don't even have a freaking weapon. Should have really brought that dragon axe. So overall, a very nice cliffhanger for the third episode. And he has three episodes in so far for SAO Season 3. I was actually thinking they would speed up the Elicization arc some more, just so they could get to some events sooner. Notab Honestly, I love the pacing of SAO. I, I, I love the two core, like it doesn't feel like it's stalling either. I love, like Season 3 has just been fantastic. I don't even mind that like, I don't know. They Could it be more concise? Probably, but like, even if it's not being concise and they're kind of giving us more detail, I love the detail. It's, it's so good. It does not feel boring. It does not feel like, you know, <laughs> Tensor Season 3 yapping. Probably this Goblin Assault. And there are some events and action scenes I definitely can't wait to see animated. Although I do have to say, I am enjoying them taking their time. As for the first glimpse of bad animation, I told you I would call them out. Where was it? It's just those 3D birds at the very Oh, come on! Right, if the... If the biggest problem with the animation is the three CGI birds at the very start, like, I think that this is basically goaded, right? The start. Let me know if you noticed, too. Maybe it was just because I almost paused instantly after the video started. Nah, again, like, does this distract me from the overall experience? No. The CGI, I don't care, unless it's such a distracting transition that it just kind of breaks the immersion. These things look like something out of the Nintendo 64. Does this actually ruin immersion for you when you look at this one scene? Like, you're gonna tell me that the episode is un literally unwatchable? That your full focus is broken because of these three birds? There's no way anyone actually says this, right? I'm hoping they iron this out for the Blu-ray release. Anyway, that being said, there was some standout animation. My favorite has to be the Blue Rose Sword. I actually thought this thing would be blue all around, but some shots do give you this transparent texture. Of course, this takes way more effort on the animator's part. I guess they're trying to reinforce the notion that there's like this ice component to it, by right? Transparency. Be bad for them, then I'm gonna keep on noticing the texture for the Blue Rose Sword from now on. And here's a second very nice animation touch. Almost a bit of Kirito fan service for the latest. <laughs> it's Kirito's head coming out of his, with his head. You got Kirito from down below with his own reflection. Wow, back. wow, this amazing. This is definitely a nice extra effort. This looks stupid, to be honest. This is head coming out of his crotch area. <laughs> where it wasn't needed. Next up, as for more SAO Season 3 promotion going on yeah. in Japan. Yeah, what's going on? First off is the food chain, Nakao. They're having this beef and pork bowl promotion. It Yo! They should have like a sandwich promo. And it'd be like Asuna and Kirito sandwiches or something, you know? It's like an homage to episode, you know, Season 1. And it's an actual food item that makes sense to the lore. It actually just ended this week. Naturally, you have Yujiro, Kirito, and Alice suited up in the shop's uniforms. Notably, this SAO collaboration was for SAO Elicization and the SAO GGO spinoff. Right, and like a season two, I think of that, it's airing like in October or something. So they're still hyping that up. I wouldn't be surprised if the GGO spinoff got. Yeah, the characters here. Yeah, GGO new characters, right? Talifa here, I think. Is this Zekken? Oh, that's fucked up. I'm not sure if it is. It might be Yuki. This is Blue Hirasna. I think this is Cat Girl Shinon. There's a secret, and then we have Kirito, Alice, and Yu-Gi-Oh. Got a season two one day. 
Anyway, for the actual promotion. Yeah, the season two one, it's it's happening this year, right? GGO, this fucking spin-off collab, it's fucking happening this year. There this like parts, next next couple months. Each of them gave you this special SAO card. The first part included the trio plus Ram. Man, the spin-off just has a bunch of lollies. <laughs> the fucking I don't know, the gun girls. And Fuka. Part two then switched over to Shinan, Lifa, Asuna, and even Yuki. Oh man. Style. There was even a special promotion on Asuna and Kirito's birthday. Yeah. In those days you got the special. Yeah, 9.30 and October 7th. That's their birthdays? Cool. Birthday card. And there was even a bunny girl, Asuna. Oh, a chibi Personally, bunny. I really don't care for the cards. I am perfectly fine with the digital images of these. As for a different promotion. Yo, there's a soccer promo? Yo, that thing was crazy with these promos. They also announced this promotion with the soccer event coming up. You got Yuji Okirido and Alice in the sports. This is actually player. pretty cool. For better or for worse, Asuna is a cheerleader. <laughs> <laughs> Asuna's a cheerleader because she's fucking benched. She's not fucking part of Arisization right now, at least not yet so far. Haven't seen her fucking Link Start just yet. God damn it, Kikoka. Fucking give her an STL. Link Start this bitch. I need her in Arisization. In SAO Season 3. Right now, their website is promoting the uniform shirt with all four on them. Cool. They also got some towels, some plastic figure stands, keychains, and of course, even clear files. Oh, I'm never going to understand the Japanese love for these things. I'll go ahead and keep a lookout for more SAO Season 3 promos here in Japan. Anyway, as for upcoming SAO Season 3 videos, okay. I did bring up the idea about doing the SAO Alicization opening breakdown. That is coming up this week. Naturally, it is going to have... It's going to be interesting that the next episode from onward is not called a cut content, but I think that... No, no, even like um, this is not no longer packed as cut content, so I think it's fair. I think that he does have basically review and you know additional information from the light novel or the manga or whatever the source material is for each of the anime episodes. So we're going to continue with this format. If y'all have any other suggestions, please let me know in the comments as well. Please go to Mr. Fox and Anime's channel, like and sub, and I'll see y'all next time.